All right, everyone. So for today's topic, we're going to continue uh, learning about blogging for SEO, but we're going to specify now more with WordPress. On day one, we talked in general concepts of blogging, why you want to blog, why it's useful for SEO. We did brainstorming, remember? And then so this class and next class, we will focus on WordPress. And in the fourth class, we'll focus on Tumblr. So we talked previously about WordPress being the long form content. Uh, the long form content blog platform and Tumblr the short form blog platform. So we'll talk a little bit more in theory also and then get right to it to actually start using WordPress. But I want to touch again on the topics of the self hosted as well as the uh, as the third party hosted solutions. What this means is your website needs to exist somewhere. Your blog needs to exist somewhere on the internet. You need your little piece of the internet. And there's two big ways to do it. Um, the first one that I touched on that I'll go into more detail is setting up your blog or your WordPress website on WordPress.com. Here we will be able to create a website or a blog right away and for free we will have our own little piece of the internet where we can start to create a website where we can start to blog um, and uh, it'll be pretty easy the downsides of getting a free account at wordpress.com is that our addresses will have the wordpress.com branding by that i mean if i have a blog called victor's bakery i'm going to have an address that's victorsbakery.wordpress.com. I might, might have mentioned some of these things previously, but it's important to realize the difference. I can get victorsbakery.wordpress.com for free. They are, they are going to... Uh, wordpress.com is going to recommend you here and there. Well, why don't you upgrade to simply victorsbakery.com? I believe the price is about $25. I don't recall if it's per year or permanent. The point is, we have two ways to do this, and the way to get the, your site on WordPress.com is the way that I don't recommend for most people, and I'll, I'll go into detail why. But WordPress will sell you your own victorsbakery.com, your domain name. They'll sell that to you. Um, well, that will get that would that would fix that problem. Great, but the other problem is that. If you're on WordPress.com, it's like training wheels because they don't give you all of the powerful features of WordPress. The WordPress software is very powerful. But at WordPress.com, they cut one of the most important features, which are plugins. And plugins are like little apps that you add to your website to give you more features. So let's say I want to sell products maybe I want to sell a subscription to my blog maybe I have an ebook that I want to sell or a powerful um, a powerful chat feature or community boards and such those are plugins they extend the capabilities of WordPress and you cannot use plugins on wordpress.com they just deactivate that feature because oftentimes plugins come from other companies, small independent companies, people running a little business out of their garage or big, uh, bigger, more full featured design studios. They are software, little plugins from other companies besides the WordPress company. And therefore, WordPress does not want to tech support someone else's software. And they probably could not tech support someone else's software. So they deactivated the plugin feature. That's one of the other biggest drawbacks to getting a free WordPress.com account. We will talk about positive aspects, of course, but well, how do you get the most out of WordPress.com if you're so limited on their site? Well, you would go over to a hosting provider, a domain provider. Uh, uh, a third-party company and I'll mention three or four that I've personally dealt with and of course there's gonna be a thousand more that I haven't heard of and 200 that I have heard of and 
never used. But Bluehost.com is one of them. Let me pull up three of them, and then I'll go into detail. GoDaddy.com, HostMonster.com. So Bluehost, HostMonster, and GoDaddy. These are three that my company has personally dealt with, and uh, they vary in price because you will have to pay for two important things. So it always is recommended to you know price price around a little bit, just like you would with anything else. But you're going to need to buy two things. Let me pull up some notes here. I'm going to give you these notes in the network folder like I did last week. We'll say requirements for your hosted WordPress site. We'll do uh, self hosted. You're going to host it yourself you're not going to use wordpress.com and so you'll need to uh, buy an account from a reputable I'm going to put here large that, but that could be optional from a reputable large um, provider specifically you need to buy a domain and hosting the domain is the name of the site the URL, like victorsbakery.com, .net, .org, .biz, .co. There's literally probably a thousand of them nowadays, not just those ones that I mentioned. There's some brand new ones that have come out, like uh, I think there's one called .pro, like pro professionals. Dot, dot .tv is another one. Uh, there's some weird new ones, such as .ninja and dot guru dot me so there's a lot of them out there um, varying in price as we'll see Richard? yes question about domain names so a while back when I was trying to brainstorm what I want what domain name I want right I went on to go daddy and entered in a bunch and you know of course tons were taken I landed on several that I wanted to consider and then sat on it for many weeks didn't come back to it and then went back to it and almost every single one was taken and then I started looking online doing a little research and I found some sites that were saying that once you start looking um, on sites like GoDaddy if you don't purchase it that they have people that are watching and, and keeping track of domain names and that will keep up and buy them if there is one that looks like there's have you heard anything about that? Unfortunately, I've experienced it, so that's something to be aware of, unfortunately, uh, and, and it's really unfortunate that this seems to happen, but it looks like as you do the research to find your perfect domain name with some or all of these companies, suddenly, if you don't buy them in a day or two, someone else bought them. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, at first, I thought no, it, might, it must have been a fluke, but as, as it's happened, to some of the companies that I've worked with, I don't know. I think something fishy is going on with these companies. And as you're seeing, doing the research, it seems to be happening. I don't know if it's the companies themselves. I don't know if Bluehost or GoDaddy or in internally somehow does that. I don't know if maybe they have rogue people working in their companies that are watching this and then they are telling their friends buy this. I don't know if there's some sort of way that, you know, spammers or something sniff traffic and figure out what you're doing and you know monitor the traffic at GoDaddy and I don't know I don't know what's going on <laughs> yeah. so well, what, what, we, what I would say about that is yes do your research uh, add well if this doesn't make sense we'll see it but add those domains to your cart and hold on to them in your cart and then decide and don't take a week yeah. you know take a few days at the most take one day 
and as long as you're, they're in your cart they should be safe for you and then eventually then click buy but as you did your research you know and then you came back later it was never in your cart and then it might have gotten away from you so again we'll, we'll look at this together a little bit more in detail if that sounds technical but uh, unfortunately the thing is as you do research you might um, lose the name which is really unfortunate and I know that it's happened in my company it's about supply and demand and desirability so if I want victor.com so does so do a thousand other victors so they can afford to sell that for five thousand dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever so it is about supply and demand uh, and uh, there's businesses that specialize in just b bulk buying domain names and then when you need the domain name oh someone owns it oh you can have it only for five hundred dollars the good thing is that if you do buy one of these premiumly priced domain names you only need to pay that exorbitant price one time after that it goes back to a normal price of about twelve dollars a year so it's just a one-time charge that is a premium price so if it's in your budget to maybe buy one of those more expensive names and it's your perfect name, it might be a good idea to buy it because you won't need to be paying that $500 every year. It's going to go back to a normal price. Yes? Did something like that happen to Coke? I don't doubt it. These things they happen all the time. Somebody bought the name and they sold the company for like months. It could be. It could be big companies. What's that? It could be for big companies, small companies, definitely. People are always thinking, uh, what's the next hot trend? What's the next meme? What's, what's an up-and-coming company? Uh, not exactly the same thing here, but I know recently, well, maybe three years ago, this happened with Netflix. So Netflix for a long time was this great service to rent DVDs, right? So now streaming is their bigger service. So at one point they decided... We're going to spin off the DVD rental part of our business and spin off the streaming part of our business. And we're going to call one of those businesses Netflix, and we're going to call the other one Flickster. So that was very confusing and annoying for people. And what happened was they never claimed their Twitter name, Flickster. Now, someone else had claimed it and had had it and used it for years, and it was a pot-smoking teenager. So suddenly this big company, Netflix, and people wanted to follow them on Twitter, Flickster, there was this kid that had that name. And he didn't take the name. He didn't set out to uh, stick it to Netflix. He had created this account years ago, but Netflix, someone there never paid attention uh, with names and, and all of that, or never tried to get the name, buy the name from him or whatever. So that's one kind of example there. But it has happened that companies, um, I know also, for example, there's this great website to manage social media called Buffer. Well, Buffer is a very common word. And for a long time, their website was BufferApp.com. Very recently, within maybe the last six months, they were finally able to get Buffer.com. I don't know how they did it, how much they had to pay, but someone uh, had a claim to that that a company wanted, and they and they were able to get it eventually. Yes. Well, here's the thing. Nowadays, it's not as important to get your quote-unquote perfect domain name. If, I, if my family has had Joe's Pizza uh, on Main Street for 30 years, and we just thought about getting a website a year ago, well, someone took Joe's Pizza a long time ago, well, we could be Joe's Pizza San Diego. That's available. So the thing is, you don't need to have your perfect domain name be exactly what your company is. And, uh, and sometimes your, your real-world company name is, is kind of cumbersome or, or hard to remember to type on a website. So uh, you might not really have to worry about getting that name because 
if you think about the, the domain names nowadays, well, okay, we all know what it is, but in the old days, when someone told you what Facebook.com was, did you know what a Facebook is? Uh, you, when you first heard about Twitter, what, what is Twitter? Is it a bird-watching community? Uh, Flickr, what's Flickr? Anyone know? It's for, it's for pictures. If you didn't know that, Flickr is for pictures. Uh, when you first heard about the website Flickr, you didn't know what it was. And there's a bunch of new ones. Uh, okay, tell me what this one is. Um, what's it called again? Um, Odesk.com. Anyone know what that one is? Okay, what about Dribble.com? I think it's got three Bs. Um, the point is, um, nowadays, any name can be used. Okay, what about this one? Quora.com. What is that? Some of these names nowadays are just made up names, or maybe they're like Latin names or foreign names that have a meaning to the company itself. And for the regular people, they don't know what it is. But as you build a foundation, as you create an online presence, as you get traffic, as you improve your SEO, the name almost, in a sense, doesn't matter because any name, any letters strung together will represent your website and it's really the content that you're putting out there so if you weren't able to get your perfect name whatever name that you got we can work with it we can create an online presence we're still going to write your proper name on the home page and on your Twitter posts and on your Facebook messages and all of that but the domain name in a sense um, isn't as big deal as it used to be Yes. I think to her question was make a difference about distinction like home, net, or uh, making a difference when you're going to buy the domain or you're going to um, uh, optimize the search engines. That's related. That's related. That's, related. That's not going to matter either. Okay. The dot coms, you know, the web has been around 25 years. The dot coms are running out. Uh, I believe there's a limit to how long a domain name can be. I, I don't know how many characters, maybe like, you know, 40 characters uh, plus the .com. So the .coms are running out. Well, we've got .net, we've got .biz, we've got .org, we've got .me, .tv. And yes, we're so ingrained after 25 years that, oh, what's your .com? Uh, well, actually, I'm vmcinc.net. Don't go to vmcinc.com. So that's okay because, again, I'm going to blog on a regular basis, I'm going to improve my SEO, I'm going to build a presence online so that when someone searches they will get the .net and not the .com. So the extension here, in a sense, also doesn't matter. It's the content that you put out there to the world. So the thing about this is my first website, and it's still up, vmcinc.net, um, I bought a .net because in way back in the old days, the year 2001, I um, was a student, I was learning all of this stuff, I needed a website, and at, and at that time the dot-coms were much more expensive than the dot-nets. I think their price still varies a bit, but back then it was like $25 for a dot-com. Well, the dot-net was like 15 So again, I was a student, and I thought, well, I'll get the .NET, and that worked out fine. Years later, when I had a little bit more income, I wanted to get the .com. It was already taken, and so they wanted to sell it to me for only $500. No thanks. I've built enough of a presence. My website's been around since the year 2001. I don't need to go for the .com because I have this presence that I've built up already throughout the years. Yes? How can you have to update your website? Like, you know, kind of like interior design it goes out of style. Same with websites. I noticed like we made one last year and it's already out of date. That's why I'm here. So like I gotta redo my website again. Um, how often can I, can I be doing that? When you say out of date, what do you mean specifically? Out of date. What's out of date? The technology of the site? The content of the site? What? As the business is growing, it needs to change, and as I don't think it was as res responsive, you know, two years ago when we had it as phones and mobiles are nowadays, um, being able to have a clickable button to call 
Well, to modernize it, sure. Um, well, some of these things you don't need to do that often if you do them correctly the first time, like how you mentioned about mobile devices. So nowadays the search engines do value your site more if your site is mobile friendly. So let me just make a note down here, a little tangential, but uh, mobile friendly, very important uh, nowadays. That means that your site looks well on a mobile device. Have you ever visited a website on your phone, on your mobile device, and the text is tiny? You have to zoom in to even read it. That's most likely an indicator that it is not mobile friendly. So to make it mobile friendly is the way that you design the site and nowadays WordPress uh, almost automatically makes your site mobile friendly. And even if you've made a WordPress site a few years ago and you didn't have a mobile friendly theme, uh, you can have uh, a plugin that will make your site mobile friendly. So having mobile friendly, being mobile friendly. Another term for that is having a responsive theme. Uh, a theme, of course, as we'll see, is the design of your site, the layout and all of that, but specifically a responsive theme. And nowadays when you when you when you install new themes and such, they're they're almost all responsive nowadays. Because as we get more savvy about this, why would I want a non-responsive theme? That's a waste of my time. So the theme designers are putting out responsive themes. And that just means, it's a fancy term, that it's mobile friendly because it's going to respond. My website is going to shrink down to look nice on a mobile device. It's going to respond to a nice big monitor and grow to that size, respond to the size of the projector and such. So a responsive theme, a responsive WordPress theme, will make you mobile friendly, which helps your SEO. As for, you know, the design and the style of it, that that doesn't quite affect SEO, so updating the design of it is not that important. Updating it that it is mobile friendly is very important, and also, as we'll see, the content, updating your content. And I have a, a, a checklist that I'll give us about how often should I update my content. And I believe, in short, uh, as a starting point, I said last time, once a month, update your content, your blog post, at least once a month, even better, once a week, and the best once a day, but I don't have a staff of writers to help me update every day, so once a month. So one of the pieces of the puzzle is that we need a domain. This is your web address, basically. The other piece of the puzzle for the full power of WordPress is then hosting, which is basically uh, the server or uh, the hard drive, the, the place to store your files, to upload your files, uh, or we'll say your content, which, which would be your text, your pictures, your sound, the place where everything is actually saved. You need those two things. WordPress.com provides both of those for free. You can get a domain, but it's going to be victor.wordpress.com. And you can have hosting, and you'll be able to upload pictures and text and so forth. If you want to start uploading video, that's an extra charge. If you want to upload sound, that's an extra charge. So wordpress.com provides you both and more for a fee. But basically, from these three that I mentioned a moment ago, and we'll look at them again, that's where you're going to buy domain and hosting for you to have the full power of WordPress. And we want the full power of WordPress because we have all features. So I'm going to say self-hosted, uh, non-self-hosted, well, we'll say WordPress.com hosted. That's really only our, our alternatives. Self-hosted or WordPress.com hosted. And self-hosted would be like at GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, etc. And WordPress.com hosted is only at WordPress.com. The version at, at a self-hosted is full features of WordPress. 
WordPress.com is no plugins, limited themes. So you cannot add any of these extra little apps, and also the selection of designs is limited. Honestly, I don't know because I don't recommend people to get the .com and I've never bought it to give that answer, so I don't know. I sort of have to assume no because they still don't want to troubleshoot and tech support someone's weird plugin. Yes? We've dealt with several hosting sites mm -hmm. with the ones. If you're not satisfied with one, if you want to switch over, is it a pain? Do they hijack your site? It you could be difficult to transfer. But in the most recent years that I've done their transfers, it hasn't been complicated. A few years it was. I had a client that they were on a Yahoo uh, account, and that was a bit of a pain to get it out of Yahoo over to GoDaddy. And I've transferred sites from GoDaddy to Bluehost, not a problem. And I've transferred um, between that and HostMonster also. So uh, this is also why I set up here um, reputable large provider because the smaller mom-and-pop shops, those might be the ones that are hard to get away from because they don't want to lose that business because they're small mom-and-pop shops. And so people come to me and say, well, have you heard of xyzhosting.net? Uh, no, I haven't, but let's look them up. So we go on their website and we see all their features and they look like great prices and such, but there's very poor tech support. And um, we see that people complain about their speed because the mom and pop um, providers have to eventually get their service from the big guys anyway. The way you get on the internet is there's these special gateways and these providers like GoDaddy and such, they're one of the gateways to the raw internet and then so these small providers, very hard for them to get a, a direct line to the, to the raw internet because it requires thousands of dollars per day to pay for. So the small companies are going to be getting their services, some of their services anyway, from HostMonster and passing on their prices to you. And then they're going to need to be tech support. And maybe they are going to be great tech support because they're a small, you know, main street sized uh, company. But perhaps they don't want to lose you as a customer, so they might, make it e uh, they might not make it easy to switch from them. Um, I'm going to say here for your self hosted, uh, a negative is not free. And for WordPress, free. You can make a pretty good name for yourself and a presence online at WordPress.com. If you understand, you're not going to have many, you're not going to have any plugins, you're not going to have a large selection of themes. You could still run your online presence pretty well off of WordPress.com. Maybe you can't sell products, but I can create an eBay account. I can create an Etsy account, Redbubble, uh, Amazon. I can sell my products elsewhere, but have my main site on WordPress.com for free if I'm trying to you know, save money here and there. It, it is viable. Is it scalable? Meaning, would you be able to? How much harder would it be if you started growing and was and you needed something more to so to move over to self-hosted? You can move to self-hosted. There is a way that from WordPress.com we can export our site, and then on self-hosted we have import. So relatively easy to move from the training wheels to the to the gear shift. So those are some big uh, concepts there. Uh, let me say one more negative on hosting. Uh, you are your tech support. And then on WordPress.com, the, there they, they provide some tech support. The point is that it really depends on the company. For example, you've also heard of these other uh, website tools maybe Squarespace, Wix, um, Weebly. Some of these are creating a WordPress-like product, 
but also putting a lot of tech support behind it. Um, that's why you would have to pay for their services often. Uh, and so when you become your own self-hosted, you will be able to call GoDaddy or Bluehost 24 hours a day, and they will be able to give you as much help as they can, but obviously they're not going to be able to give you tech support for that plugin that you downloaded that gave you, uh, you know, uh, live chat on your site. You have to contact the developer of that plugin. And that developer may or may not be very responsive. They may answer your questions or fix your code really quickly, or they may be backlogged because their plugin is so popular and they're only one person making their living from their garage. So when you do it yourself, you will have to deal with tech support yourself a bit more. But I have dealt with phone tech support of these companies, and they, they do resolve the issues most of the time. Uh, when it is a, a more esoteric question regarding plugins and such, I often then have to deal with the plugin authors, and that has worked out pretty well as well. But uh, that's part of being your own self hosted site. A little bit more work. And I would say another negative of self hosted is too many features that may or may not be bad actually and wordpress.com is limited which that may or may not be bad what I mean with too many features is on your self-hosted you're gonna go daddy or bluehost they're, they're all gonna try to upsell you or cross sell you <laughs> I'm gonna try to buy something and they say well why don't you also add this and it's gonna sound like yeah that's great I, I, I need that or they're gonna say well you've got currently this plan but it might be better if you upgrade a little bit for more if you get more traffic yeah I might get more traffic on my site in a couple years but they want to sell it to me early so all these companies are gonna try to do that to get you to buy a little bit more uh, so there might be too many features which are the good ones which are the bad ones um, really the minimal the minimal accounts that you buy should work for most people until actually you start to get a lot of traffic and you need more power on your site because just like when you buy a computer you have to choose how much hard drive space does it have uh, how much RAM does it have how big of a monitor do I want you can do all of that also to a degree on your self-hosted you can buy more hosting space you can buy multiple domain names you can buy more email addresses you can buy more RAM for your site or uh, all of those sorts of features but really we'll see here that the basic accounts usually will work best for most people. So let's look at some real examples. I'm going to pull up GoDaddy for a moment. Let's see what they've always got deals going on. All of these companies do because they're in competition. So right away it says sale ends 930 managed WordPress plus a free domain just one dollar a month. Okay and then it says first year only. Annual purchase required. So okay for the first year I can have a, my brand new website self-hosted for twelve dollars and then the next year after that well, I'd have to look up where it says the actual price one thing that I would be careful about and the different self-hosted companies call it different things I know with GoDaddy they call it managed WordPress I would avoid that one that's almost like the training wheels of WordPress.com in that it limits you to some features uh, when we actually create the account on GoDaddy or whatever, there's going to be a button that says Install WordPress. You just want the basic account, and then after the fact, Install WordPress, which gives you the full features. This one, I know it has had trouble when people come to this class, my SEO class, for example, and we need to upload a file to the host, uh, to the hosting server, let's say. But this might not give you access to that because it wants to shield you from that stuff. So managed WordPress might be useful to a lot of people, but usually I recommend don't get the managed one, don't get the training wheels version, get the full version. And you usually get that after you buy the basic account, there's going to be a button, install WordPress. And I cannot show all of these features here, obviously, uh, but if you have any questions, I can help you individually during lab time. So they're selling a .com for $2.99, asterisk. So I would want to read that, of course, probably just the first year. A .us, the brand new .online, Victor's Bakery .online. 
And yeah, I'm going to need to educate people. Visit us on our website, victorsbakery.online. Not .com? No, .online. So, unfortunately, the .com was taken 10 years ago. And so I might make a name for myself with .online. Dot Vegas. Literally, there is now a dot XYZ. Mm -hmm. Dot Asia. So let's say I'm going to go over to the domains section here. I can start to do the search, but like I said, unfortunately, it looks like once you search, if you don't claim the name, if you don't put it in your shopping cart, it might get taken. So there will be a variety of prices. Some names, of course, will be more expensive than others. And as I said, you may be able to, like this one, oh, $13,000. Victor.online. <laughs> exactly. It's, I think it's predatory prices, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Victor's online, exactly. Question? Well, I think years ago I, I read something, I was uh, looking at some kind of island, island news, South Pacific island news, and there was an offer from a company there, that uh, an island company, that um, they offered free, uh, not free, but very cheap uh, domain names. It, can other countries do that? Yes, um, because there are domain names that are tied to particular companies. Uh, our countries. .uk, for example, are domain names that are owned basically by the United Kingdom. There are domain names that end in .e, which are owned by Deutschland? Germany? No one knows that? .de. .de. Deutschland. Uh, there's .he for Hellas. Greece? You didn't know that? So some of the some of these domain names, um, like .cx, I believe that's the Christmas Islands. So that's an island out there somewhere. So some of these domain names that end in a two-letter extension oftentimes come from a company. Technically, .tv doesn't mean television; it means Tuvalu, an island in the South Pacific. So the the, the island of Tuvalu has the .tv domain extension, and then they make a business by selling websites that have .tv. .io is also, I believe it is near England, an island near England, I don't remember what it stands for, but that one is, is a country that is selling their, their extension here. Um, sometimes you see websites that end in ly, like bit.ly, 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 and other ones that end in ly, that's actually domain names uh, that are owned by Libya. And we know that the situation in Libya is not so good. So companies that have a domain in .libya sometimes experience uh, problems with their website because it's, you know, the, the servers and the technology of that website are in that country. So therefore, if that country is unstable, it could affect your domain. Like that .tv, it's an island in the middle of the Pacific, and uh, it could affect the speed and the um, availability of your site, you know, if there's hurricanes and such, uh, unless the companies have also put servers on other countries. So these ones that, are, that usually have a two-letter extension are usually tied to a country. These other ones are, are another matter. Dot company, dot website, dot email, dot city. So what if there's San Diego dot city? I'm curious here, San Diego.com. I don't know if this is an official San Diego owned by San Diego.
well, if you want to make some money, buy San Diego dot city, and then when the city of San Diego wants it, um, sell it to them. So anyway, uh, the domain is one thing. Uh, let's look at hosting because this is the more confusing part. So here, for example, we've got web hosting, WordPress hosting, dedicated IP, premium DNS, servers, cloud, virtual, and dedicated. What do I choose? Well, the WordPress hosting often is the training wheels. If whatever company is selling you a WordPress account from their company, probably it's the training wheels, not the full features. So plain old hosting. Well, what does plain old hosting mean? Um, they might have different names. So let's say web hosting here. We've got economy, deluxe, and ultimate. $4.99 a month for the first year. $5.99, $7.99. What that gives us is one website, 100 gigabytes of storage, unlimited bandwidth, 100 email addresses, and a free domain. So for the first year. Then we've got Deluxe, the next level. Unlimited websites, and storage, and bandwidth, and 500 emails. You can buy... I can buy victorsbakery.com and victorsrealty.com, but I would need to buy separate accounts uh, if I go with economy. If I have Deluxe, I can buy both of those and manage them from my one account and create websites from my one account. If I do this with Economy, only Victor's Bakery will be a live site, and Victor's Realty, I would have to pay extra to make it a live account. So the Deluxe one is a better price if you're going to have more than one website. I don't mean domain names, though. If you've got victorsbakery.com, victorsbakery.net, victorsbakery.org, that still all works with economy. You'll just direct, you'll redirect all of those other names to your main name. But if you've got a completely different websites, Victor's Bakery and Victor's Realty, the deluxe one works better for you. That I'm not sure, but I'm thinking really uh, large, stable countries. Um, so, uh, US, France, England. It is. So there's this big company, ICANN, that really deals, it's I-C-A-N-N. -N. They deal with all of the domain names, really. It's the company that keeps track of all domain names and extensions. And yes, these names, .city, .arrow, uh, .biz, uh, .guru, all of these ones have been approved by ICANN, the large, uh, the large company that deals with all of that. Yes. You recommend when you when you have a client, you recommend them to take the most expensive one, right? To get a few bucks, it's worth it. Uh, possibly. It more than the deluxe. I mean, don't you? You know, as a business, you know, as a web developer, web design. It depends. Ultimate? Not all the time. Uh, it really depends on what they're trying to do. If they're starting off brand new as an e-commerce site and such, you can still probably do really well on the economy because they're going to have one website that's plenty of space to upload their content, unlimited bandwidth, so people will be able to connect unlimitedly. Um, and as the site grows and gets much more traffic, perhaps we can upgrade to the larger uh, accounts. But I would say start off with the economy one, see how that works for you for a few months, and then if you need to, you can easily upgrade. So all of these come with all of this great software, WordPress and Joomla, MySQL, all of that. Question. Um, no. If um, let's say we're going with economy, 
And so if I look here, 499 times 12, so it's about $60 for one year. And then for the first year, I'm going to get the domain for free. After that, the price uh, will increase to regular price, $6.99 for the hosting per month per year. And the domain name will probably go back to the $12 or so. So for this first year, I, I, that's how much I would pay. After that, well, let's do $6.99 times 12. That's $83 plus, let's say, $13. So $96. So $100 a year after that. Yeah, that is $100 a year. But then you have your little piece of the internet where you can put anything you want, your e-commerce site, uh, blogging site, anything. And especially if you're making some money, $100 a year is not a big investment. Obviously, these prices increase once you start going to the next ones. Let's say we want to go with Ultimate. So uh, regular price is $14.99 a month times 12. That's already $178. And then plus the 12 the $13 of the domain, so $200 a year for the ultimate. So twice as expensive as the economy one, but it's for more complex sites, more heavier traffic. And again, $200 a year is an investment, but if your company is making some money, it's a good investment. And you also get deals. I've dealt with all of these companies, especially on the phone, and they always give you deals. So you might be able to lock in five years at $100 a year. Okay, $500 up front instead of $1,000 uh, in the total of five years. Question? Uh, I'm just curious about the uh, part on emails at the very bottom of the card um, description. Uh, it says um, 100 emails from the economy, and then it goes up to up to 1,000. What exactly um, does that mean? It should actually say 100 email accounts, or I suppose addresses. So that means I can have tech support at victorsbakery.com, questions at victorsbakery.com, CEO at victorsbakery.com. I can make up email addresses that have my domain name. No more victorsbakery at gmail.com, which is very unprofessional. You don't want to deal with, and you don't want to be a company that has your name at yahoo.com, at gmail.com, at hotmail.com. That is not professional. You want to have sales at victorsbakery.com. You want to have emails that have your domain, and you get them here, starting out with a hundred of them if you want, and a thousand of them if you need. Notice what's also useful in the ultimate is that it's got okay two times processing power and memory so right here again just like a real a re your regular computer you might need to get a new one when it's too slow or add more RAM or whatever our websites run on a computer they run on a server farm they run on a on computers that are in a room like this a room full of computers from ceiling to floor GoDaddy has that Bluehost has that all of these big companies have that the mom and pop shop might have three computers in a closet and they're all sharing the resources. A big company like Bluehost is going to give you different resources like the economy and deluxe give you one CPU, half a gigabyte of RAM, and 100 entry processes. The ultimate doubles all of that so your website runs faster, responds faster, there's less weight for people to connect. Um, What's premium? Uh, a $35 value makes it easy to resolve common issues that prevent from accessing your site, improving your overall performance. I, I have to look that up exactly to see how useful that is. That may just be some sort of internal selling tactic. Uh, so don't worry about that yet. But one year SSL, that one's good. If you're going to be selling products online, if you've bought products online, you've noticed a little lock on the address up here. That means there's security on the site, SSL, a secure socket layer. Just security, that your credit card data is traveling through the internet secure and encrypted, because by default, traffic passing through the internet is not secure. So your email address, your password and such is not secure, unless it's on a site with this little lock, which also means your address here usually is HTTPS. Or secure. 
So if we look at a site like my site over here, if I was collecting credit card information and such, there's no lock, there's no HTTPS, this is not a secure site. I don't need it to be a secure site. But if your site, you are selling products, collecting credit card info, you want security, and that's not free. That's usually about $90 a year. It's an extra feature. But look at this, with Ultimate, you get it for free for the first year. And then after that, oh, a $69 value. So that's what will, that's what will give you your user's peace of mind and also protect you from, from uh, help protect you from hacks and stolen data and all of that. Mm -hmm. Do you also, um, can you go to GoDaddy for an app? That's a pretty complex question. Um, I'm not quite sure of the answer because really a, a lot of times apps do not run on these kinds of providers. They run on specific app, app server providers like Amazon Web Services, like Microsoft Azure platform, like Google, whatever theirs is called. So these big companies that deal with app traffic uh, are going to work better. You can probably run your app off of one of these servers. I, I haven't, and I don't know really how robust it is for that, because then an app often has to deal with, <coughs> with a lot of database and cloud services. And at the moment, these are more for consumers. So going with Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, um, and other related ones, those are built for that, for your app infrastructure. When you uh, go through any of these providers, it might ask you, would you like cPanel, or perhaps would you like Plesk, or Parallels Plesk? Would you like Linux, would you like Windows? And you say, well, I don't see the Mac version. Which one do I choose? It's not asking that. It might then you might think, okay, I've got Windows, so I'll choose the Windows one. It's not asking you that. This is asking you, what operating system would you like on the server? Not not what operating system do you have on your computer? Either of these will work just fine. But if you go with Linux, that's the one I recommend because that's the one that often has much more free software to work with. It has many more extra features. Like uh, for a long time, you could not use WordPress on the Plesk server. It was just incompatible technology. Uh, this operating system over here said, well, WordPress is very popular. We've got to get WordPress to work on our system. So now WordPress works. But oftentimes, the latest, most useful software comes to Linux first. And so I would recommend you get the, the Linux hosting if it's available. And it comes with something called cPanel. That's a very popular Linux server hosting software. On a Windows server, they're offering here Plesk, which is popular for Windows. But um, notice the check marks on the Linux one are a few more than the, than the Windows one. I have had people come to me that say, well, we have to run our website on a Windows server. Do you have any ideas? And yes, GoDaddy and others do offer Windows servers um, to, for, for your features if you need them. But if you're starting brand new, I would recommend the Linux server option. So those are the two big ideas. You need hosting and you need a domain. Let's take a quick look, then we'll take a break. Uh, what does HostMonster provide? So here we've got $4.95 per month. You get a free domain, free website builder. Again, that's their term for it. I would not get that. That's the training wheels. The one-click WordPress install, that's the, that's the correct one. That's the one that gives you the full-featured WordPress. 24-7 tech support. Here, they're going to give you $100 in Google AdWords and $100 in, in Bing Yahoo credits. So if I need to do some pay-per-click campaigns, if I need to put some ads on Google or Bing or Yahoo to get more traffic to my website. They're giving me $100 there. I didn't see that at GoDaddy. 
So again, they're all in competition with each other for the best service. They have the Mojo Marketplace, which is a place for you to get all of this great free software, like uh, Magento. That one is very popular e-commerce software. Uh, very powerful and also a bit complicated to use, but you've got all of this other software. Zencart. I haven't heard of this one. Data Mail. 100% US-based support, so uh, you might get faster. Um, tech support, I don't know if it's 24-7. Let's see, hosting features. Unlimited disk storage. Unlimited domain hosting, so you can have Victor's Bakery. Victor's Realty, Victor's Dog Walking, all on one account. Drag and Drop Builder, you don't want that, that's going to be too limiting. Free domain name for one year, that's good. Support for international domain names, so if you need a .mx for Mexico, they seem to provide that service. Secure email, POP and IMAP. You use a cPanel, the popular one. You use it, it gives you FTP access, secure shell. It's very powerful, um, but pretty. Uh, not not everyone needs this, but if you need this, they provide it. Etc. Site stats, databases, multimedia features, support for streaming video. courtesy site backups. So they'll back up your site on a regular basis for you. MIDI file support, if, if it was 1996. Great. Uh, and then lastly, we'll take a quick look at... Yes. I didn't, I, I didn't see it at a quick glance. Let me do here. SSL e-commerce. Yeah, SSL secure server. So they've got here two ninety five a month. Our experts at twenty four seven, thirty day money back guarantee, live chat. Let's see. WordPress hosting, really, that's most likely going to be the training wheels version, twelve ninety twelve forty nine a, a month. So some of these call this shared hosting. And then there's VPS hosting. So shared hosting is that you know there's a server that's what a server looks like it's a special computer that really is only connected to the internet each one of these hard drive each one of these is a hard drive which could include multiple other websites so your website might be on one half of one hard drive well on the other half is someone else's website and if someone else's website uses a lot of traffic and resources your website might slow down a little bit that's just the the reality of a shared hosting uh, site so they offer different ones like dedicated hosting, but you're going to see that the prices really go up much higher because that's like your own computer, your own hard drive, uh, reserved just for you. So let's see here. Let's see these prices: three forty-nine, five twenty-five, and thirteen for shared. If we're over on dedicated, seventy-four ninety-nine per month first month. Normally $149. Premium, it gives you four CPUs and one terabyte of hard drive space mirrored so your data is secure. 16 gigs of RAM is better than my computer. 15 terabytes of bandwidth, one domain name, five IP addresses. So this is for hardcore websites. But that's normal price, $250 a month. Well, for GoDaddy will have this as well, but right now we're looking at the dedicated account. So three thousand dollars a year to run, to run your your website on a premium dedicated server. You might need that. You might have so much traffic, and you might be generating enough income that you're going to need this. You won't know until you you know have a website and see how it goes, and you're going to see you're going to start seeing complaints from users. This site is so slow. 
well, people often tell me, well, not that often, but people sometimes tell me, I don't like WordPress because it's so slow. Well, it's probably not WordPress itself, it's your server. So even on, even on a shared hosting, if you go up one level of service, that'll probably increase the speed of your site a lot. And if you've got a lot of traffic and a lot of sales, just a lot going on on your site, maybe one day you'll have to go to dedicated. Yes. Um, normally, it's very easy when you have uh, like a minimal one, and then you want to upgrade. But mm -hmm. uh, suppose you did something, and at the end of the year, you figure out that you need less than you thought. So, how difficult it is to come down instead to go up? You know. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy because it's all these companies, it's, this is all virtual stuff, it's stuff running on a server and copying files from servers and such and changing settings is relatively easy. So it should not be a problem to downgrade or upgrade. Just to compare, I'm looking at GoDaddy to see what their dedicated prices are. Well, $139, regular price $200. So $200 instead of $250. Well I would have to go in and compare what what it is. And notice these are going to say configure. Choose your settings. How much RAM do you need? How much um, hard drive space do you need? And all of that. So $1,600 for the first year for dedicated GoDaddy. So there's a lot to deal with here. What size company are we talking about? When we're looking at this kind of um, RAM and storage, etc., um, are we talking about like Amazon or? or Pretty like, much. Yeah, really big good. companies, um, Walmart-sized, you know, big companies. They probably still pay ten thousand dollars a month to keep the lights on, but yeah, when you're approaching those types of sites. Definitely, these are the prices they're going to be uh, requiring. So that's a lot to think about, a lot to digest. Well, to get back to this class, what we're going to do is we're going to create a blog, and we won't need to pay anything to any company because I want to talk about, obviously, blogging for SEO to get traffic to your site. Ideally, when people come to this class, I want people to already have their own .com or .net, whatever, on a hosting provider so we can get started, ideally. But let me get a show of hands here. How many of you currently have your own website, your own domain name and everything? So that's about half, less than half of the class. That usually is what happens. So what we do is, what we're going to do right after the break, it's coming up, we're going to, together, create a free account at WordPress.com. We're going to get the totally free version of it. Yes, we will not be able to use plugins. We don't need them. We're, we're going to have a limited selection of themes. We don't care about that at the moment. And later on, we will be able to export your site over to HostMonster and then add extra plugins and extra features and all of that. So we're going to take a break. When we come back together, we will create a, a website at WordPress.com. And I'll start to talk about, well, if you've never used WordPress before, let's learn a few of the settings and buttons and such. And then, once we are pretty comfortable with WordPress, then I'll give you a checklist of, of what, what and how to blog exactly, and then we will actually start to write blogs. So it's uh, about 10.50. Let's come back at 11. When we come back at 11, we will proceed.